If you supplement creatine, can it cause hair loss? Let's get into it. What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to give you a quick life update. You may or may not have noticed that my uploads have slowed down quite a bit and I know this has a massive effect on momentum and growth and you know even people remembering about my content and so that's kind of unfortunate but I just wanted to give a quick explanation. I'm not quitting YouTube or anything. I will still put out videos when I can but the truth is I just haven't been able to make the income I need from YouTube alone to support my family, especially as a new father and you know, YouTube videos and the occasional sponsor just hasn't been able to bring in enough. So I ended up getting a full-time job. So in addition to being a new dad, I'm also working full-time and still trying to put out these well-researched, well-educated videos as well. So I'm not quitting YouTube. I'm still going to put out content. It's just going to take a little bit longer than I'd like. I wish I could give you an answer like, it'll be once a week or bi-weekly but the truth is it depends on when I have the energy to devote to putting in the time to these videos so it's usually nights and weekends when I will have any time to be able to do that so anyways I love you guys and hopefully in the future YouTube can provide enough to where I can do this full-time and I can put all my energy into that because uh, that's the best way to grow in something is to focus 100% of your energy into it. But having said that, let's get into this video. So before we can dive into creatine specifically, we should discuss what causes hair loss. And in this video, we're talking about male pattern baldness or androgenetic, androgenic alopecia. Yes, there are other types of hair loss. There's things like telogen effluvium, which is stress related or alopecia areata which is hair loss in patches. But the question is, will creatine cause male pattern baldness? Will it cause you to go bald? Will it cause you to lose your hair? So let's look at the cause of male pattern baldness and sort of what the science says about creatine. So male pattern baldness is when the androgen receptors in your hair follicles are genetically sensitive to your androgens, your hormones, mainly DHT which is a more active androgen converted from testosterone. It's called dihydrotestosterone, and it's converted via the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. And that sensitivity causes the follicle to miniaturize and eventually die, which causes the hair to fall out and never regrow. And the key thing to note here is that the follicle is genetically sensitive, meaning androgens don't cause baldness in all men, only in men who are genetically sensitive in their androgen receptors. So not every single man is genetically sensitive to those androgens. This is why some men are grandpas with a full head of hair and some men are 30 and totally bald. It really does come down to your genetics. So it's the sensitivity to the androgens based on genetics that cause hair loss and not the androgens themselves that cause hair loss in every single man. So it comes down to your genetic trait and roughly 30 to 40 percent of men have this balding genetic trait. And the most common way to tell if you have this is that androgenic alopecia typically follows a pattern of hair loss and that pattern is measured on the Norwood scale. So I'm not going to go deep into the Norwood scale and male pattern baldness, but if you think you're balding, check the Norwood scale to see if your hairline is following that pattern of recession. And if you're still young and you aren't sure if you have the balding trait, then keep an eye on it. And the first sign you notice of thinning or receding, you know, that's when you should take action. The earlier you act, the more hair you'll keep. What does creatine have to do with any of this? So to answer this question, we're gonna be reviewing really the only study that I found that has any relevance to this topic, and it's a 2009 study out of the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine. The study measured three weeks of creatine monohydrate supplementation in college rugby players. So there were two groups who took either creatine or took a placebo. And the first group, the subjects loaded with creatine, 25 grams, per day of creatine combined with 25 grams a day of glucose, or the second group, which was a placebo, which just took 50 grams of glucose. So they did the loading phase for seven days, followed by 14 days of the maintenance phase, which is just five grams a day of creatine, and then 25 grams a day of glucose, or just 30 grams 
of glucose placebo in the second group. So a quick note to add is the typical recommendation for creatine supplementation to help with muscle growth. If that's what your goal is in using it, it can also help with energy delivery, water retention, things like that. But for muscle growth, the recommended creatine supplementation is five grams per day. You don't have to do a loading period if you don't want to when you supplement creatine. But going back to the study, the results were that after the seven days of creatine loading, and a further 14 days of creatine maintenance, the player's serum testosterone levels did not change. However, their levels of DHT, dihydrotestosterone, increased by 56% after the seven day loading phase and remained 40% above baseline after 14 days of maintenance. So the ratio of DHT to T increased by 36% after seven days and remained elevated by 22% after switching to the maintenance dose. So what does this mean for hair loss? Well, unfortunately it doesn't mean a whole lot because this study didn't measure hair loss in any of the individuals and there's no direct study that links creatine specifically to hair loss. It only measured an increase in your androgen, specifically in DHT, which is the main androgen to cause follicle miniaturization in men genetically sensitive to their androgen receptors, which causes hair loss. So I think that the idea that creatine causes hair loss stems from people reading the study saying creatine increases DHT, DHT is bad for hair, and then they made the conclusion that creatine causes hair loss, even though there's no study directly linking creatine to hair loss. Now to be clear, that is kind of a logical assumption that can be made. If you're a man susceptible to male pattern baldness, a 56% increase in DHT is probably not something you wanna take a chance on. So maybe you wanna wait until you're a little bit older to see if you have any signs of balding before trying to supplement with creatine. But if you have no signs of male pattern baldness, your hairline is still very juvenile or even mature hairline, then I would say, you know, go ahead and supplement your creatine. It's the most studied supplement in fitness, not necessarily hair loss, but in terms of strength increase and safety, five grams a day indefinitely is the recommended dosage. And that's what I take. I take five grams a day of creatine. I haven't had any issues with receding hairlines or hair loss. And if you do decide to take it, I would suggest that whatever brand you buy from, make sure that they use the Crea Pure. This is the most widely studied form of pure creatine monohydrate and is guaranteed to be the highest quality. Just off the top of my head, I know that BP and SUPS sells Crea Pure creatine and I'll link to them in the description. I know that because I've taken them and they're local to Austin and I know that they're really good quality. But real quick, here's another study I found showing strength increases in creatine supplementation. It was a 2003 study from the Journal of Strength and Conditioning that showed the average increase in muscle strength, which is their one, three, or 10 repetition max following creatine supplementation plus resistance training was 8% greater than the average increase in muscle strength following placebo ingestion during resistance training. So that's a 20% versus a 12% increase. So similarly, the average increase in weightlifting performance of max reps at a given percent of their strength following creatine supplementation plus resistance training was 14% greater than the average increase in weightlifting performance following just plain old placebo ingestions. To conclude, there is no direct evidence linking creatine to hair loss. There is only evidence showing that it increases DHT in college aged males. That's really the only study I could find. And you know, if this worries you, then yeah, maybe avoid taking it. If you feel confident in your hairline, you want the strength gains, you want the increase in max repetitions, 14% is pretty significant. Then I would suggest go ahead and take five grams per day indefinitely. That's what I take. I haven't had any issues with hair loss, but I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.